Now I shoot both USPSA and IDPA and there's something that you can tell when you meet a guy who shot for a long time but only has shot IDPA. There's like a skill set that they have that keeps them from getting out of kind of second and third gear and really laying down some blazing fast stage times. And I know this because I see them at the IDPA matches that I shoot and my patrons over on Patreon who have their matches analyzed all make very similar mistakes. So I thought I'd take a minute to show you in a video some skills that you can work on to increase your IDPA game and make those stage times drop. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and today we're going to be talking about how to lower your IDPA stage times through using USPSA skills. You might have noticed that uh, we're not in the studio today because I didn't feel like setting up the lights. So we're going for a walk. I've got a microphone on. Hopefully wind noise isn't too bad for you guys, but I get to wear sunglasses while I talk to you and that helps me look cool. And that's one of the most important credentials of picking a firearms instructor is that they look cool. And since I don't have any visible tattoos, sunglasses are gonna have to do. I do have one hell of a tramp stamp though, but I guess that doesn't really count. So I'll take you through about five or six different skills that you can work on right now to lower your stage times in IDPA. And the first skill is gonna be a threefer. It's a position entry, crowding cover, and stance. If you get real honest about it, a course of fire is nothing but a drag race to the finish line. There is a final position of cover that you have to shoot from, and once you're done shooting those targets, you're done with the stage. There may be some stops along the way, and each one of those stops, if you can set up quickly and leave efficiently, is going to save you a bunch of time getting to the finish line. There are two areas where you can excel in this sport. One of them is going to be transitions from target to target, and the other one is going to be setups and exits. If you can get those skills down, you'll witness the biggest gains to your game. So let's talk about position entries. First and foremost, stop crowding cover. And what I mean to that is just because there is a barricade, it doesn't mean your chest has to be like two inches from the barricade and your elbows can be all the way past cover. Don't do that. There is going to be a natural position that you can get into quicker because each step into a position is a step you will have to take out of a position. So if you are coming from uprange to downrange, you don't have to run all the way downrange to be flush with the barricade. You can stop all the way back at the edge of the fault line. The fault line extends all the way up range. And if you're shooting with a dot and it's 2021, I don't know why you wouldn't be at this point. But if you're shooting with a dot, the shooting doesn't get that much harder when you get honest about it. So if you save those steps into position, you're going to save them out of position and fewer steps is less. Oh good, there's dog barking. So fewer steps into a position is going to be fewer steps out of a position. It is going to save you time to accept marginally harder shooting to not go as deep. The other thing, and this is a unique skill to IDPA, I don't see this nearly as much amongst the USPSA guys, is stop me if you've seen this before. The guy is going to kind of bound into position and stand up tall, and then he's going to point his inside leg and stand on the toe of that. So basically all of his weight is going to be on his outside leg and none of his weight is on the inside leg. The problem with that is that the time it takes for you to stand up into position is dead time. It is wasted time, and that is going to lead to slower stage time, so you can't be doing that. The other problem with being a twinkle's toe is that all your weight is on one leg. Now you may have noticed when you're shooting static on the range that your weight is evenly distributed between your feet. And if you've been practicing practical shooting, you probably know that transitions occur through driving your belt buckle and sternum to point at the different targets. You don't actually swing your arm. The problem with putting all your weight on one leg is you lose the ability to transition the gun using the large muscle groups of your legs. So if you keep your weight more balanced and it is going to be biased more towards the outside, you'll retain the ability to drive the gun using the large muscle groups of your glutes and your hips and your knees to pop the gun from target to target, your transitions will be a little bit quicker. And possibly the biggest problem with crowding cover is your position exit. Now, if you are chest to barricade like IDPA shooters are wont to do, then you are going to have to exit that position. And if you're crowded, that's gonna mean aside from lowering down to load up your leg and explode out of position, you're going to have to suck the gun into your chest or potentially risk banging the gun on the barricade as you you leave the position. So by keeping a healthy distance way better than arm's length back from the barricade, you can exit much quicker by doing like a pivot push out of position and you don't have to do a drop step because a drop step, which is good if you're in a super hard lean, is not good if you're in a position where you don't have to use a drop step. And by crowding barricades, you're putting yourself in a position where you have to use a drop step. So stop crowding cover. And the next skill to get comfortable with to excel at IDPA is going to be running with a gun in your hand. Now, this is a skill that you can practice 
and dry fire, which means that your ammunition is nowhere in the room and the gun is fully unloaded and safety checked. Definitely double and triple check that you are being safe if you choose to practice with an empty gun. So there's a couple ways to run with a gun efficiently, and there are really kind of two. And if you're a lower tier shooter, like say sharpshooter or below, I'm gonna recommend one technique. So the first skill is rather than letting your arm drop to your side when running like you would naturally run as you pump your arms, keep the gun floating in front of your chin like this with your finger just like this. The nice thing about this skill is you can practice it without a gun in your hand. If you make the gun sign with your hand, that's exactly what it's going to be like when you actually are holding a gun. By keeping the gun at chin level, it's very quick to rebuild a grip because you're just pressing out about eight to 12 inches and you're right there in a firing position. The other nice thing is IDPA has a lot of prop manipulation with uh, no-go zones where if you point your muzzle at a red area on a door, you can get disqualified. By keeping the gun at chin level, you're always maintaining line of sight of where your muzzle is pointed. There's a couple of ways to hold the muzzle. Generally speaking, your palm will be facing down as you move uh, down range, but if you're moving to your strong side, you may go palm up to keep the muzzle pointed toward the back berm. Moving to your support side is going to be palm down. Moving up range is gonna be similar. If you turn to your support side, you're gonna keep your palm down. And if you turn to your strong side, then you're going to be keeping your palm up or potentially reaching over your back. That is a more advanced skill and I honestly say you do not want to figure out whether you can do that safely in a match. That's something you're going to have to have a lot of reps training at home. Now that we know how to run with the gun, let's talk about when we should be mounted versus dismounting the gun and running. So it's going to be naturally faster for you to run with one hand on the gun. That's going to allow you to pump your arms and build up a good head of steam as you run. Problem with that is uh, in an IDPA course of fire, same as USPSA, there's not really an occasion in a lot of instances to actually break your grip and run because is generally speaking, you're gonna to wanna to start aiming at the targets through the barricade as you approach the targets. So what that generally is going to mean for most people is that you should have both hands on the gun pointing through the barricade where the target is going to appear three steps out of the position. So as a general rule of thumb, if you're decelerating with three steps, you're going to need to not break your grip unless you're stepping maybe more than five and you've got two or three good strides where you can pump your arms and run hard. So generally speaking, you're going to want to keep your both hands on the gun as you move between positions if you're moving less than say five steps. The added speed of being able to pump your arms doesn't mean anything if you are waiting for the gun to come up as you get to position. You're going to waste way more time doing that. The next skill that we're going to discuss is taking free movement when it's available. What do I mean by free movement? You may have noticed when you're drawing the pistol you can't do anything else. That is dead time. Standing static, you're not shooting targets, eliminating targets, you're not taking steps towards that final position of fire. So you're gonna have to fill all that dead time doing something else if you can. Now, this is a skill that IDPA shooters understand on a shallow level generally because round dumping is an example of using dead time. Rather than standing static and doing a standing reload, IDPA shooters will usually dump one to two shots so that they can perform a running reload, which generally speaking, the math is gonna work out on that in your favor. But most universally, the dead time is also there on the draw and I don't see many IDPA shooters using the one or two steps out of position to gain towards the next shooting position on the draw because static draws are wasting times just like static reloads are. So the next skill is actually going to be stage planning and keeping efficiency in mind. If you take all of those skills that we just discussed and during the walkthrough, you figure out how to effectively and efficiently plan a course of fire, only committing to positions as much as you absolutely have to in order to see all the targets and shoot everything that you have to, taking the minimum number of steps required. And as you plan the stage, keeping the shooting either as easy as possible or as efficient as possible. If you're standing three yards back from a barricade, there's not a big difference between shooting at like say 10 yards with a dot gun and seven yards but there is a big difference of shooting say like 12 yards with an iron sight gun and 15 yards with an iron sight gun. So you're gonna have to factor that in based on your own a knowledge of what you can accomplish with the gun in your hand. So once you kind of figure out the choreography of where you need to be standing on each thing, what it's going to feel like as you swing the gun from target to target, you're gonna rehearse that in your head over and over again. So that's gonna be my challenge to you is figure out like what is the absolute fastest way, most efficient way to go through this course of fire. And you 
usually it's not going to be what everybody like if it's if it's abundantly clear to like all the sharpshooters in the group what the most effective way is on a longer field course there's a good chance you're not looking at it correctly because most of those guys are going to default to like crowd cover and run as deep into position as possible and i'm not saying it's going to be some whiz bang you know hard to think of thing but it will be something along the lines of not running and having your foot all the way up against the barricade but rather at the base of the fault line standing further back and the next skill and this is the most common i noticed this the most in my patron videos amongst pure idpa shooters is you guys do not get yourself ready to shoot to where you're shooting from your subconscious and the way that you accomplish that is through mental rehearsal so during our walkthrough we figured out our plan at least once per each shooter in front of you on the stage you need to close your eyes and visualize what you're going to do through the course of fire you need to see everything you need to see the quality of your sights on each target you need to know the aim points on each target you need to know if you're planning on dumping rounds which target you plan on dumping rounds on and you need to know what the, when the reload is going to be so that your hand automatically falls to your mag pouch and you can complete the reload you need to consider on visual barrier type targets that you're reloading coming into when the reload has to be complete so you don't expose yourself to targets and soak up penalties which is something i'm famous for doing in idpa on difficult shots or maybe activator sequences you need to imagine what you're going to feel on the trigger as you move it to the back the more times you can rehearse a stage mentally and rehearse it at slower than normal speed you don't have to do it at full speed necessarily you can think about stuff like what level your hips are going to be at as you leave position and how your quads are going to burn as you enter position because you're going to stay nice and low and get on the sights super fast very obvious when somebody steps onto a course of fire and is thinking their way through the stage the guys you see who are burning it down and it looks easy those are the guys who are operating in their subconscious if they look like robots and they're very hitched like okay now do this now do this those are the guys who are not putting in the work mentally before they shoot so those are just some of my observations having shot an idpa match recently i wanted to share them with you guys check out my patreon if you want to follow my performance diary i talk about a lot of skills that i'm working on all of my aha moments are sort of captured there and i mean there's like over 400 posts over there so check it out i appreciate you guys catch you on the next one